Hello there, Bradley from BRAD TV here. Still sharing this journey of recovery, reclaiming my identity, myself, and just finding peace. I'm at a point now, the tears have stopped, and the pain is not as frequent, but then say when it does come, I want to say it's worse, but I think it's because it feels worse, because it's not as frequent, so I'm not used to it, if that makes sense. And the numbness and the not caring, that's still very prevalent. That's still right there, I think. And that's why this past week or so, my diet has just been absolutely awful. I thought, because I haven't been caring about what I eat, so I don't care about food, so I might as well eat healthy food. And then I thought, well, perhaps I'm denying myself some human pleasure in the form of treat food or anything I want. So I've just had a bad week. I just, I sort of forced myself. I was eating healthy just and like was making all my meals, but then I just let it all go. And I started having takeaways, every sort of takeaway, kebab, fried chicken, extra large pizza with all the trimmings, full fat Coke. I couldn't remember the last time I actually bought full fat Coke. Uh, and I've just been eating like a, a pig for a week pretty much. And has it made me better in any way? No, not at all. If anything, I've spent more money. I've got chubbier, I guess, but then I've been going to the gym, so it's still okay. But I've been putting rubbish nutrients in my body. And if anything, this week my sleep has been worse and I've been having more sort of bad dreams or whatever. So I can't really kick myself for having done it because I'm glad I've done it because now I know it doesn't do anything for me. So there's no amount of food, or sorry, amount of food, there's no sort of food that is going to magically make me feel better. And if anything, not having structured meals and buying all the fresh food and making it and having that part of my life in a routine, it was just disorder and chaos pretty much. So the routine is very good for me. So I guess this week I've learned from that bad experience that I like the healthy food and I like the routine I have of making my meals and planning them and things like that. So that is good for me. Um, yeah, I'm away again now traveling and today was a total waste a day. Didn't go to the gym, I didn't wake up and go out for breakfast. I stayed in the room, had this little pot of porridge thing. I went back to bed, put my headphones in, listening to move on with your life hypnosis, let go of the past hypnosis stuff, meditations, and just wasted the day, of course, intrusive thoughts were coming in, and it was awful. So today was a real step back, but I mean, I brought my gym kit and my YouTube stuff ready to do a video, and today I just didn't, I just couldn't. It's now the evening, and I've finally got a spark of life hitting me, so I'm just shooting this now, so I can tell you that I'm going to be waking up early in the morning, having my protein bar, waiting an hour, having my caffeine tablets, go to the gym, kick my ass in the gym while I listen to Rammstein, and then I'm going to have breakfast. I'm going to go out and have breakfast. Just taking each one day at a time, two steps forward, maybe one step back. Today, laziness, weakness, it just got me this morning, yeah. But now I'm ready to have a good day tomorrow to make up for it. So even if you slip up, you regress, you go backwards, whatever, overall you can still move forward. Two steps forward, one step back. I'll say good night, and I shall see you bright and early in the morning. Good night. I was in bed just thinking, what's the point? What's the point? What am I doing? I just stay in bed, doesn't matter. But I thought, this is the point. This recovery journey, recovering, getting back to myself, that is the point. And I was reminded of a quote from the TV show Angel. If nothing we do matters, all that matters is what we do. Quite profound. But for now, let's just go to the gym. Let's just do that, why not? That's better than staying in and going mad with sadness.
This is soaking wet. I should have done that over the sink. <laughs> and this morning, um, lots of intrusive thoughts. I powered through and had a good workout, but it's like every set, these things are coming to my head. I'd just be like, no, no, listen to the music, get in the zone, lift the weight. And I did. But, I mean, yesterday, I was just laying in bed and all these thoughts were coming in and I had no distraction. And it's, I've got to think of it like not so much as a distraction that I'm doing this to not think about that even though I am. I've got to try and really be present and enjoy the workout. Grenade, carb killer shake, pre-made. <sighs> Man, it really goes back to my last video saying that I don't even know if it's like the ex-partner I'm missing or if I'm just so sort of broken, lost and confused at the moment that I just want someone to love me. And that's the the mad thing. But now I say I have my dreams, my nightmares, whatever, and then every now and again it's like I just miss her. No, oh, damn it. <sighs> someone who essentially I didn't know who isn't a friend, isn't my enemy, they're just a complete stranger. Which I can't even say it's someone I used to know because I was in such my little fantasy world that they might as well have been a stranger, so why am I worried that I've been rejected by a stranger? And then even if that's not right, and I've been rejected by someone that I knew, they don't want me. Why am I worried about someone who doesn't want me? That's a good thing. So I don't, someone doesn't want me, they've got rid of me. Good. Why would I want to stay or waste my time with someone who doesn't want to be with me? So I've got to realise that it's a good thing, but that's easier said than done. <sighs> Stocky, chubby Bradley. <laughs> I blame those kebabs and pizzas I was having. And so I'm really sort of grateful for my friends and family and the fans and the support out there. People are messaging me and sharing their stories and saying that my silly videos are inspired and kept people going. And But the messages and things that are coming in now, it's unbelievable. And it's encouraging me to push forward and film this and do all this and get out of this funk because that, like I said, that now is the point. The point of this recovery is for me to recover and keep sharing that. And when your future, essentially, if you have a breakup or something, your future, if you're like in love and committed and that is your life, you imagine that's your life. You're, you're with that person, they, your partner, you're going forward and you're sharing this journey with them. And then suddenly when that's snapped out of existence, your future essentially is gone. So for me, Suddenly that weird thing saying, oh, six months from now, I'm doing this physical mental recovery. Looking forward, that, well, that's what it is, I'm looking forward and I'm thinking about my future. But that's the most important thing in these broken, dark times. It's feeling hopeless, lost, scared, confused, and like there is nothing to look forward to and there is no future. And though I'm saying I'm not really caring about anything, I'm sort of caring about not getting worse because I want this six months Bradley, not necessarily I'm gonna be physically transformed, I, I can do that hooray at any point. I want up here and in here and in my soul to be happy with Bradley. Even if I look like soft like this in six months time, I want my soul to be strong and lean, and clean and sharp and with it and energized and hopeful about life like I usually am in my videos. Think about your future short term, long term. Thank you everyone, I'll see you at breakfast. So that's breakfast done. Omelette with onion peppers, back bacon, cut all the fat off that, salt fish, and some wholemeal toast without any butter on it. I had no appetite, but I think I hoovered it up because I just wanted to get out of there so quickly. I sort of like the emotions were bubbling up a bit and I just wanted to get away to like happy families, couples, people, and I just wanted to get away. Um, I think I ate it too quickly and given myself indigestion, but I ate it. And then talking about the emotions, I think I've realised why I'm feeling particularly crap right now, away where I am. This is where I came right after the breakup happened. And it was like I'd moved the day before, all my stuff's in like black bags and boxes. I had to find my things for work. And then, so I'd moved, just came away here. And I was here before, just broken like at the breakfast thing, sunglasses on, no one could see me, teary-eyed, whatever. 
I hadn't, I hadn't even thought about that, that, oh, this is my first time back here after I've progressed quite a lot. So I've realised that now, and that's why I think all these intrusive thoughts were popping in. I can be pleased with my little victory of today of getting up, going to the gym, and going out and having breakfast. That's my victory at the moment. And now, so I've sat here in my room, quiet. What, what am I going to do? Sit here and boo-hoo over what's happened and make myself worse and get unhappy? It's, it's just nonsensical. It's while I'm say not crying and not totally overwhelmed and I'm in control of my conscious brain, there's no part of me that's gonna do that. Or even sit here now and talk too much on camera. I'm gonna go for a walk, just get out, get some fresh air, get some sunlight on me. I mean I'm travelling home later, so I can take it then as a big victory that I've got through another little trip away on my own in somewhere I was just after the breakup that might have reminded me a lot of it so I can take it as a victory that now I've, I've got through this and I've plodded forward one foot in front of the other when you get low when you get low, 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 low <laughs> who got them apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur uh, uh, when you have your low times um, it really is about taking one step at a time and it's too big maybe sometimes to think, oh, I'm thinking six months in advance, even though that can be a good thing to do, to think about the future like that. You can't suddenly think that big, like at the moment for me, so I'm not even doing one day at a time. Just think, I'm gonna to get to tomorrow. But at the moment, it's like, I've got to get to the next hour. And that's like bad times. But that's how I've used that in the past. Like at my worst, it was literally, I'm gonna look at my watch, and I'm gonna to get to the next minute I'd get to the next minute, and then it'd be get to the next half hour, and then I'd be looking at the watch, right, I've got to get to the next hour, and then it became a day, and then it'd be, right, I'm going to survive for a week, and then a month, and then before I knew it, I'd stopped using that sort of technique and forgotten about it, then maybe like a year later or something, I was like, oh wow, I hadn't had to think like that for a long time, and I just remembered it, but at the moment, yeah, in this rough little patch, I've relapsed with a bit. I've done well this past hour. I can do well for the next hour as well. So I'm sorry you're having to see me like this, but I'm still here, I'm still fighting, I'm not giving up. You're still here, don't give up. You're still here, don't give up. Wake up, get out, do something, and that's what I'm gonna do right now. I will see you later. Well, I shall have some tuna and porridge for my lunch. Why not? Lunch time. Porridge tin of tuna. I went for a walk, I laid in the sun, I stood in the sea, I swam in the sea, I just floated in the sea and just was. I was present, I got out of the hotel room. Let's say after a failed day yesterday, I've had a good day today and I've done things. But I could have done more. And I could have been more present. And I could have felt more at peace. I think I'm just done feeling like this. There are things I want to do and create. And like, there are things I want to put out there. In my little corner of the digital world here at BRAD TV, I have shared and inspired and entertained. And I like doing that. And I want to keep doing that. And I guess I am doing that at the moment, but it's more about that of necessity rather than pure passion and joy and wanting to. It's because it's give me something to focus and well, so give me something to focus on and do, so that is good. But I've got a lot to give. And my friends, my family, they're sort of worried and concerned. And it's like, why are they, now they're feeling like discomfort and displeasure in life. And it's like, no, this stops here. Having this low trip. I think it's because say, I'm not gonna say too much on here, but I, so I saw my ex for like what I knew would be the last time and then after that I just thought well there's no reason to have her number or anything so I just essentially wiped everything from my life um, that's sort of like the closure I think for me that was a big a big sort of full stop at the end of it and I think this is the first video since that so yeah so it really is now this is the new chapter of my life 
and that is over. So even though so I haven't shed a tear, but I think this little getaway has been the realisation of that maybe. It's time to seriously think about Bradley and B-Rad and what I'm doing. What I'm creating, I know what I'm creating next. I've got my next poetry collection, I've got a B-Rad book and a novel that I'm sort of all working on all three, planning and plotting, but I haven't dived into any of them really, apart from the poetry that's ongoing. And I think in the same way that I have numbed my way into the gym, and when I was preparing and eating all my healthy meals, and when I forced myself to go to my parents, forced myself to do things, I think it's going to have to just be going through the motions initially. Maybe it won't be the best writing I've done, but hopefully getting into it will get the cogs moving round. Yeah, I think what I mentioned earlier in front of the mirror was a real big thing for me. Those sort of the two big points now, say letting go and closure. I didn't know this person. I I'd invented a fantasy. Like, I think I wanted them to be something, and I really built that idea up. But in reality, I didn't know them. They say they may as well be a stranger. And now at this point, after what's happened and broken up and whatever, not my love, not my friend, not my enemy, my complete stranger. So why am I upset in any way over a complete stranger? And then the second thing, this person, whether I knew them or not, didn't want me. I gave myself, my life, everything to them, and they didn't want it. So that's no reason to be upset. If you give your all to somebody and it's just quickly and easily discarded, fine, that's good. I've got to try and believe that and know that, but if they don't want me, there's no point us being together or me being upset about it. Like, if they wanted me and I wanted them and there was some situation thing, yeah, that's a tragedy, be upset. But this, it's like, well, hang on a minute, you don't want me, okay, bye. That's how it should be. Easier said than done, but they're two pretty big points about moving on and closure. Now I'm starting to believe them a little bit and say, thinking about what I want to do in my life, that is... Just thinking about that has got my energy up a little bit. This is where the buck stops. Moving forward. A couple of trips away to look forward to. Ramstein, all my writing, and getting back on the gym and the diet properly. Inspiring, contributing to the world and helping people, which I've done now for years on here, just by messing around and being me. And I'm gonna keep doing that. Right. Thanks for support everybody, I'm going to eat my tuna and porridge like I have done for the past four years and I've been travelling away, saving money in hotels. I love tuna out of a tin and porridge that I boil in a pot. That's the B-Rad diet. Okay, look after yourselves, take care, thank you for all the support and help and everything. And watch this space for a recovery of epic proportions. Might not all be up, up, up from here, up, down, up, down, but overall, two steps forward, one step back, pushing on. Look after yourselves, take care, and be rad.